Tobias Harris is finding the right balance. Mo Bamba's the starting center for now. And the Sixers have a tough test, perhaps, tonight against the Brooklyn Nets. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. Hello, my name is Keith Pompey. I'm one of the co-hosts of Locked On 76ers. And got a lot to talk to you about today. First, I want to start off by talking about Tobias Harris. You know, as Tobias Harris goes lately, the 76ers go, right, have gone. It's one of those things where you look at it and you say to yourself, Tobias has to play well with Joel Embiid out for the Sixers to win. If he doesn't play well, they're going to be in trouble. They are. I mean, you know Maxie is going to get his points. You know, you know, you know that. That's a definite, right? But you also need Tobias Harris to get his. And it just seems like he hasn't been for a while. And the team has struggled recently. But then the last two games, Tobias kind of stepped it up, played well. He did things right. And guess what? The Sixers won. Now, again, the first game was against the Charlotte Hornets that they won on Friday night. Tobias had 31 points. And you kind of figured that he was going to play well that game just because it was like he was due. This was a easy team to play. You know, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like there's always something in life, games in life, where you say, okay, you're going to snap a, a slump. You're going to get out of a slump. And that was the perfect opponent for it to happen. Then they go to Dallas. And he comes back and he has 28 points against the Mavs in the victory on on Saturday, right? So with that being said, you say to yourself, like, okay, I see you, Tobias. You're playing well. You're doing great. You're doing everything. The thing is, you look at the Mavs and the critics are going to say, well, the Mavs don't play defense, you know, don't play defense. So there's always going to be people who criticize what he does. You know, he goes up against Brooklyn at night. Some people say, hey, that's the Brooklyn Nets. But the way I look at it is, you know, right now, Tobias is finding the right balance on the court, right? You know, I mean, he's figuring out different ways to slow down the game. He's also found ways to get to his spots, and that enables him to make shots and play with confidence and wins over the Hornets and the Mavs this weekend. But guess what? He's not forgetting to do a lot of the little things, like playing with high energy and making an impact any way he can. And that's what benefited the Sixers, who improved to 35 and 25 after those two uh, victories, right? So... You know, the crazy part is, like, and we talk about when, you know, he scored, not crazy, but he scored 59 points in those games. He hit the 31, then he hit the 28, right? Um, But in 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 his last seven games before that, Tobias was shooting, I mean, excuse me, he was averaging 12.6 points on 35.1% shooting, including making just 27.3% of his three-pointers, right? In those games, those last seven, now, again, he missed two games. He missed two. Um, But I'm talking about his last seven. So he missed 
two of their last nine games before this two game stretch. So I'm only including his last seven. The Sixers were two and five, right? So, you know what I mean? But, you know, then he came back and against against uh, Charlotte, he had the 31 we talked about. He did that on 13 of 19 shooting, including going four for eight on three pointers, right? Right. Then the next night, he had 28 points on 11 of 19 shooter. He made three of six three pointers. So Tobias has been balling, man. You know, and he said, obviously, the last two games have felt really good. I just wanted to continue that type of flow and that pace. And that's what he has to do. Now, here's something that a lot of people probably don't know, right? And Tobias is around, you know, a 17 point scorer since he's been here. You got to realize, third option. I mean, when he first got here, he was like the fourth option, if you want to be real, because you had um, Jimmy Butler, Joel. Joel was number one, of course. Then you like Ben Simmons, Jimmy Butler, so to speak, whomever it was. And then you had Tobias. And a lot of times they would try to get Tobias going early on. And then next thing you know, he became a floor spacer, right? So it was crazy. And then after that, he was like hovering around the third uh, option. You know, last year he was the fourth option. You know, this year he's back to being the third. But when you factor it in, so since Harris joined the team in 2019, the Sixers are 98 and 47 when he scored 20 points or more, right? 98 and 47 when he scored 20 points or more. Now, this season, they're 18 and 7 when Harris has at least 18 points, right? And as Nick Nurse says, it makes a big difference, right? I think guys probably saw against the Mavs that he was quick um, just with his decision making. When he got out, swung to the corner, I mean, it was in his hands and up. Or he was ripping and going driving to make the next play. I think that to me shows that you are making the right reads and playing with no hesitations. That's what we need. End of quote. Nurse is right. That's exactly what the Sixers need. And the crazy thing about it, it's the second time that Tobias has gone through something like this. I mean, remember early on, it was the same way. He wasn't aggressive. And then he found a way to play next to Joel Embiid. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's like Joel Embiid leaves and he goes back to being that same guy where he lacked aggression. He wasn't the guy that, you know, they needed him to be. And, you know, I hate to say it, he has to continue to play this way. But he also has to make quick decisions, quick cuts. Now, another thing that I think that's benefiting him, though, if you're going to be real, is that Kyle Lowry. I mean, Kyle Lowry is the best pure point guard that he's played with since he's been the Sixers. I mean, you talk about it. Ben Simmons, you know, a good point guard, all-star level point guard. But it's fault. But Ben was more of like an athletic guy. He got out there. He did this. He got a lot of assists. He did things. Don't get me wrong. But Kyle is like a throwback type of guy. Now again, he can score, but he's a throwback type of guy. He's like directing people. He's a great leader. He does stuff like that. So then you go to Maxi. You know, Maxi is involving into that. But right now, I still consider him a combo guard who just happens to be an all-star point guard. I know that sounds crazy um, to say that, but it's true. Like, I feel like he's evolving into a point guard. I feel like that his better days are ahead of him. I think that, you know, he's always been the man. He's always been the scorer. He's been stuff like that. So that's what he had to do in the past. So now I think he's learning how to do that. James Harden, an elite two guard, an elite two guard who can also pass who can set teammates up, who can do a lot of different things. But when you think of James Harden, now I know he's been playing a one recently, lately, all this and that. He has the ball, very ball-dominant player. But I feel like Kyle Lowry is the best point guard that uh, Tobias has played with since he's been a 76. I, I just do. And it, to me, is no coincidence that the two games that Tobias has played well and since 
the trade or I mean since the um trade deadline are the two games that uh um Kyle Lowry has been in the starting lineup, right? So to me that has a lot to do with it. It's um it's good. I mean it's great for Tobias, right? It's it's great for Tobias. It's it's great for um the Sixers, you know, but you know, I, I feel like hopefully for him, for hopefully for him, you know, um, that this is something that he can carry on and 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 play well with at least you know tonight because after the night the night and moving forward is about to get a little it's going it's going to get a little tougher for the Sixers extremely tougher for the Sixers right so they got a lot of games coming up but let's talk about better help right you know better help is something that you know sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest big or small, certain things can really start to get at you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today, you know, we wanted to talk about that. Now, here's the thing about BetterHelp, right? So what it does is um, therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have bigger problems than our favorite sports teams, and it's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking or starting thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on MBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MBA. I'm telling y'all. Do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is the 76ers center position, right? So if you know, Saturday, Sunday was the first time. Well, no, take that back. Thursday was the first time they went out that Sixers unveiled their new starting lineup. And let's break this down. So what they're doing is right now is, you know, Mo Bamba has been starting at the center spot. Um, Paul Reed has been coming off the bench as, as the backup. And they've been closing out the games with, um, uh, with Nico Batoon at the small ball center. And what's important about all this stuff is, is because, believe it or not, Paul Reed has been playing on fire coming off the bench. Now, I don't know if it's that motivation factor where he wants to show Nick Nurse like, yo, coach, you're making a mistake. You're bringing me off the bench, dude. You don't know what you're doing. Like, yada, yada. Like, I'm going to come out here and I'm going to be a boss. I'm just going to ball. I'm going to ball out. I'm going to do whatever I can. Well, bro, let me tell you, if that's what you're trying to do, you ain't never starting again because that energy that you're bringing off the bench is like cray cray. Like you're not starting again, bro. You're just not. You're not. You're not going to do it. Right. But uh, here's the deal. So the thing is, they realize that with Paul Reed, when Joel and B comes back, they're going to need him to go back and play that role. He's a used to coming off the bench. He's used to seeing things like surveying everything and then coming in there and just doing what he has to do. So that's the thing. That's a great role for him. Also, Mo Bamba plays a little bit better when he starts, right? So it's one of those things where they look at it like, you know, Mo Bamba says when he warms up and then he gets on the bench, he's cold, you know, yada, yada, he does things. Now, the good thing about it is, he looks good in the starting lineup because he doesn't have to be the man. He just rim protects. He does other things. He runs the floor. He uses lat length, his athleticism. He plays well. You know what I mean? He just does. I mean, you know, you got. And then you also have an elite center now with him in Kyle Lowry that's giving him lobs, doing other things. But again, he doesn't play a lot of minutes, right? He doesn't. But at the same time, he's out there and he's active and they feed him 
from time to time, but he's basically out there with his length, running the floor, doing a lot of other things, right? So then you have Nico Batum. Now, the thing about Nico is when Nico was with the Clippers, people forget how in the playoffs against Dallas the one year, they went small ball, and they had Nico at the center. And guess what? They beat the Dallas Mavericks in that series. So I believe it was a couple of years ago. Um, they had Marcus Morris get this moot playing the four, and they had Nico playing the five. And then, of course, you had Kawhi and, and Kyrie. And that's when they went to the Eastern Conference Finals. But um, the thing is, right now, you look at it, when he was with a Clipper for the past three years, he excelled as a small ball center. So now when you don't have Joel Embiid out there, you got these three guys. And this is the things that you have. Now, again, you know, you look at it, Nick Nurse ain't going to come out publicly and say, um, this is something we're going to keep until Joel comes back. But it's working. It's working. And you get the gist and everything that this is something that, you know, they are going to keep. Now, again, the last two games, they won up um, – the, you know, the last two games, they 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 went up against seven-footers, you know, elite big dudes. Not elite, but tall big dudes, right? So it was one of those things where when you have a guy like Paul Reed, 6'9", he's giving away a huge height advantage. So now you have Mo Bamba doing it, and it's seven for legit seven-footer. So it's, it's pretty good. But I think it all works out well for everyone. Now, again, if I'm Mo Bamba, if I'm P. Reed, I want to close out these games. But what happens is they, they realize that the last two games, the other teams are going small and they went with Nico and then they got their lineup out. In the last game, it was kind of cool. You had the, the, the five guys that they had out there were Nico Batum, Tobias, Tyrese Maxey, uh, Kyle Lowry, and uh, Kelly Oubre. Right? Yeah, so – that was a nice lineup, right? When you think about it, then you also have like guys like Buddy Hill, you know, comes in and do that stuff. But the reason why, um, what you call works well in that lineup with that length and the starting lineup, because you have Kyle being a facilitator, you know, you have three scorers on the floor and Tobias, Buddy, and uh, Tyrese. So it's one of those things where that that can work out. It can work out. And it has worked out. I'm talking about the with, with Mo in the starting lineup. And and get this, the last game, um, Paul Reed was the first guy off the bench. He shot five for six. He was balling. First guy off the bench, bringing that energy, bringing it. And so you know when we when we talk about all that and you see what's going on, it's like that's the reason why it's happening. It, it works out well for for the 76ers. It, it really does. Now again. We'll see how that works out, but I think you're getting all three guys involved. You're, you're doing a lot of things. Um, you know, you know they got you know they have Brooklyn tonight. You know, they have uh, Memphis on. Um, you know, they they got Memphis on uh, on Wednesday, New Orleans on Friday. So you know, it's a lot. There's a lot going on, um, and we'll see if that thing can still continue to work out. Um, but it's a pretty good start. Now, again, like I said about Tobias, people are going to say, look, bro, that was the Hornets, man. <laughs> like, come on, the Hornets were undermanned just like the Sixers. And then Dallas, come on, bro. You know the Mavs can't make stops. They they try to outscore you. Like, you know, like Luka had – a day, a triple double and a loss, like a 38 point triple double in the loss. So it is what it is, but you know, we'll, we'll see what they can do. We will, we'll actually see what they can do moving forward. Um, I'm just here to tell you that I feel like um, it's a good start. I mean, again, I mean, for them, I mean, I, let, let's be real. It, it is what it is. Like they were struggling mightily. They looked like a team that was lost before. And for them to come out and show this, even I don't care who it was, as long as it was an NBA team, I mean, you know what? Like, if it was the Washington Wizards, I get it. If it was uh, the Detroit Pistons, I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Um, but outside of that, like, 
I got to say, a quality win is a win. And then especially a team like Charlotte that was playing well until they played the two games against Milwaukee and then the Sixers. So it is what it is. But, again, it's going to be another test tonight to see what they can do. Um, it's going to be a, another test uh, uh, after that. And and even like a team like Brooklyn, people are like, what do you mean a test? What do you mean a test? Well, you know, I'll tell you in a little bit why I believe it's a test, right? But right now, I want to talk to y'all about FanDuel, right? Get buckets for your first bet on FanDuel, right? America's number one sports book. Because right now, a new customer gets $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel official sportsbook partner of the NBA. I also want to talk to y'all about Locked On, right? Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube and now is also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channel app. Like I said, do it today, people. Definitely do it today. Now... Here's something I want to talk to y'all about. Like, I want to talk about tonight's game, right? So, we have tonight's game. Um, it's uh, the Sixers against Brooklyn. You know, Brooklyn lost last night. Um, they lost last night's game to the Grizzlies. Uh, it was a game that uh, Ben Simmons did not play in. You know, he's injured. He's still injured. Um, but when you look at this Brooklyn Nets team, they're athletic. I mean, last night they started Dennis Stroder at the one, Mikael Bridges at the two, Nick Claxton at the at the at the at the five, Dorian Finney-Smith at the four, and Cam Johnson at the uh, at the at the three. Right. So. You know, Cam Johnson is a guy that we, you know, the, the Sixers, a lot of people thought the Sixers would go after when they drafted um, Matisse. It was one of those things where Cam went off the board quick, like <laughs> like Phoenix just snatched him up, right? But we all know about Mikel Bridges, right? We know that he's the guy, you know, he's the man. He's the dude that, hey, Sixers fans wish that they drafted him too. Well, actually, they did draft him. Remember, they drafted him and they traded him. But, you know, Claxon is a rim protector. Uh, Schroeder, you know, I like him for what he does in, in this league. He's been bounced around a lot. Um, but, the, you know, the guy from Germany can really play. Now, the thing is, if you would have said to me a couple months ago that the Sixers and Brooklyn would be in for maybe an entertaining game, I would think that you were crazy. Because back on November the 19th, the Sixers came to Brooklyn and defeated them 121 to 99, right? But Joel Embiid gets hurt. He's been out with his left knee surgery. And the Sixers play Brooklyn at home on February the 3rd. And everybody's thinking like, you know what? You know, this might be a pretty good game. Pretty good game. Nah. Brooklyn went out there and defeated the Sixers 136 to 121, right? 
they beat them 136 to 121, right? Um, you know, it was a game where, I mean, you look at it, uh, Brooklyn shot 51.6% from the field. Now, the Sixers did make 41.1 threes of their threes, but it was just one of those games where, you know, it was weird. Like, Brooklyn had 10 turnovers compared to the Sixers' five, and they still won. But Brooklyn did a great job on the rebounding the boards. They out rebounded the Sixers 40 to 33, right? They had more assists than the Sixers, 35 to 26, right? They blocked five shots compared to the one of the Sixers. It was just one of those things where Brooklyn got out on the Sixers early. I mean, early. They led 38 to 22 after one quarter. And then the Sixers like held it even a little bit um, in the in the in the second quarter, but Brooklyn came out and won the third again. They were 38, 38 to thirty one. So with that, it was like game over. It just was. Sixers never made up any ground. And then you know how stuff gets laid, and you put people in, and the close gets the you know the score gets closer because the only score quarter they actually won because they were tied. They both scored 29 points in the second. But the only quarter that they won was, like, the fourth. But you know how that is. Like, y- y'all won that quarter, outscored them by eight, but you still lose by 15. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's a sign that the game was over at the three quarters, basically. Basically over. Basically over. So, you know, you look at this Brooklyn Nets team, and, you know, they have Kevin Ollie, the new coach, a former 76ers, you know, he coached at UConn. Um, I'm intrigued by what they what they have. I really am. You know, I, I'm intrigued. You know, and it, but the sad part is Ben Simmons, you know, because you look at it and he's been dealing with injuries since he's been a Sixer. And, you know, I remember um, talking to someone from another team, medical guy, and he was asking me about Ben's back, and he was like, Keith, it's not going to get any better. I was like, huh? And he said, Keith, it's not. He says, because when you look at it, it's kind of like he's a big guy, 6'10". It's the second time he's dealing with a back injury. That stuff's going to be there forever. Like, it's not getting any better. And lo and behold, he gets traded to Brooklyn. And even that year, like when he was holding out, he had back problems. But he gets traded to Brooklyn, and what happens? His back is bothering him. So here's the thing. They lost to Memphis 106 to 102. You know, Nick Claxton had 21 points. He had uh, he had 21 points. He had six rebounds. And get this, um, Schroeder had nine assists, right? So they lost that game, and they dropped to 24 and 37 in the season. But before that, they won. A, they swept a two-game series against the Atlanta Hawks. The first game they won 124 to 97. The second game they won 114 to 102. Right, and then they lost the game to Orlando. They got kind of boat raced. But then the crazy part is how they lost to Memphis. They boat raced Memphis back on February the sixth, February twenty-sixth. 111 at uh, 80, 86. So, you know, it just seems like maybe they took them a little lightly. I, I don't know. No, nah, they didn't take them lightly. It was a close game. It was a really good game, close game. So they actually won three of their last five games. And that's good for a team who had a four-game losing streak going on before that. So we'll see what's going on with them. Um, and those four losses, they weren't like close at all. The one that was was when they lost 118 to 110 against Boston. The next game they lost 121 to 93 against Boston. Then they lost to Minnesota. Um no, they lost the uh, excuse me, they lost 136 to 87 against Boston. They lost to Toronto 121 to 93. And then they lost to Minnesota 101 to 86. So, you know, they struggled. Um we'll we'll see what, what they can do you know, against this team, against the Sixers. But I want to say this. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus or national sports shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on free Fire TV channels app. I also want to thank you all for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all tomorrow.